Okay, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Alex Elgaev, and uh, today's topic will be GitHub Action Security Landscape. Um, I'll present you in my latest uh, research, really interesting research regarding, uh, regarding GitHub Actions. Uh, so let's get into the agenda. Uh, so first, we're gonna explore what is GitHub Actions and why is it a really powerful CI-CD system. Then we'll get to into what kind of misconfigurations GitHub Actions could have and how an attacker could leverage this one into code execution. Uh, then we'll uh, try to understand what could be the consequences of, uh, of this code, uh, code execution by exploring GitHub Actions internals. We'll get some several interesting demos there. And uh, finally, we'll list uh, possible mitigations for uh, all these issues we'll present. So I'm ex Alex Ilgaev, I'm a senior security researcher at SciCode. Uh, previously, I were a, a malware research team leader at Checkpoint. I was reverse engineering a complex uh, crime and APT malwares. Uh, I love uh, CTF. Uh, you, you can follow me on Twitter, so reach out to me, whatever you want. Um, so let's talk about uh, GitHub and GitHub Actions. Um, GitHub, for all of its history, was all about storing source code. About two, two to three years ago, they went in a bit of different but similar direction, and they unleashed GitHub Action, which is a, a way to automate, customize, and execute uh, software development workflows right from the repository. Uh, and GitHub is extremely popular, as you all know. It has over 73 million developers, more than 200 million repositories. And GitHub Actions also became extremely popular mainly to its uh, very rich marketplace, uh, containing more than 12,000 uh, custom actions. And almost any environment has action that can support uh, workflows inside, uh, inside GitHub Actions. And so why do we need uh, GitHub Actions? Uh, the most um, simple uh, uh, workflow that we could build in GitHub Actions is to take our code, for example, Golang or Python or C, or uh, it doesn't matter, to build that code, package it as a container, and push it to our uh, chosen uh, registry. It could be Docker Hub, JFrog, or whatever you want. Uh, there's additional uh, scenarios so that we could use GitHub Actions, for example, uh, creating scheduled tasks that could scan vulnerabilities in code, could be uh, running tests for a pull request, uh, labeling uh, issues, it could be sending uh, the issue that, cr that created in GitHub to a ticket handling system like uh, Jira Monday, Asana, and etc. So how a GitHub Action workflow looks like? First of all, it's a YAML file, and it contains three parts. It contains a name. In this example, it's a GitHub Action demo. It contains a triggered event. In this example, it's a push event. This means that whenever we push a new code uh, into the repository, uh, we, this workflow will be triggered. And then it contains several jobs, and each job contains steps. In this uh, example, we have a single uh, step that just echoes hello world. And if we take this YAML file, put it in, uh, in the repository, the community repository in that git slash workflows uh, path, uh, that's it. That whenever we push a new code into the repository, the GitHub Action service will trigger this workflow for us. Simple as that. So to understand the vulnerabilities, uh, and the issues we found, we need to understand some of the uh, core mechanics of uh, GitHub Actions and how it works. The entity that uh, executes the, the jobs and the workflows itself called GitHub Runner, and this is an open source project maintained by GitHub that just fetches the jobs from the GitHub, uh, GitHub Action service and just executes them. Uh, this runner could be run either on a GitHub hosted machine, which is the more uh, popular uh, method uh, to run workflows, or it could also be run on a self-hosted machine. If it, it's run on a GitHub hosted machine, it also run as an ephemeral environment. This means that each uh, job will be, uh, will be run on a completely clean VM isolated machine, and whenever the job's uh, over, that machine will be uh, completely deleted. Yeah, that happens. Uh, for each uh, workflow run, a new uh, temporary GitHub token will be created. This token uh, is used inside the workflow to invoke various uh, GitHub API requests, and we'll soon uh, see what is the, that token and why, it, uh, why it's created. 
So what is GitHub token? The, until it was uh, introduced by uh, GitHub Actions, the, the popular method to invoke GitHub API was using personal access token. But the problem, the personal access token has a few, has two main drawbacks. It is tied to the user uh, permission set, and it, it can, it's not granular enough to be uh, to permit it to specific repositories. So it is the first drawback, and the second drawback is that uh, it has a really long uh, lifetime. So if this token, the personal access token, is leaked, uh, uh, so it's it's not it's not good that it's a very long lifetime and it, it can be leaked. So GitHub introduced GitHub token, and this is the preferred method by GitHub to use uh, to invoke GitHub uh, API inside the workflows. And this token has a default uh, write permissions for most of the uh, triggered event. And it has permissions only for the repository from where it was, the workflow was invoked from. And it's valid only for the duration of the action or up to 24 hours the most. And it's used also as a default parameter for many, uh, for many uh, external action used in the, that workflow. And as I said, also the preferred method to invoke GitHub API functionalities. Also, another security mitigation GitHub introduced is that a forked pull request to repositories can, will receive, uh, for public repositories, will receive at most read permissions for that GitHub token, or else it will be a serious uh, security issue. So another uh, uh, core mechanic of uh, GitHub Actions is secrets. Uh, in order to create a meaningful uh, workflows uh, in, our, uh, in our project, we need to uh, store various secrets uh, and invoke uh, requests to, uh, to other resources. For example, we want to invoke it to cloud API or to uh, various artifact registries uh, uh, and so on. Uh, these secrets uh, could be divided into three uh, groups. First, secrets defined on an organization level. Uh, these secrets will be exposed to all the uh, workflows in other repositories for that uh, organization. Also, uh, that each secret could be also limited to specific uh, private repositories or specific repositories. An additional uh, level of exposure is secrets that defined on a repository level. Uh, these secrets will be exposed to all the workflows for that specific repository. And, uh, and the, the third one is secrets defined in the repository environment, which we'll talk uh, later in the mitigation part. So now that we have some background on GitHub, on GitHub Actions, let's start, uh, uh, let's present the, the, the issues we found and how to handle it. We have a simple uh, workflow that we created uh, that will uh, it will be uh, triggered whenever a new issue is created. I, 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 uh, probably everyone knows the issue on GitHub. They are used to track uh, bugs or maybe feature requests and so on. So we can, we can create a new uh, workflow that will be triggered whenever a new issue is created. And this workflow contains uh, uh, one job and will run this bash script whenever it's run. This script uh, checks that the issue title contains the word bug, for example. And if it, the title contains the word bug, it will invoke GitHub API and update the, uh, the issue label with a new label that's called bug. It's a simple workflow that could be, maybe could be used to help maintainers to triage the, the issues, for example. And this workflow, uh, we can see uh, this uh, double curl brackets. This is another uh, mechanism of uh, GitHub Actions that uh, helps the workflow uh, developers uh, to receive inputs from the user or from the, the GitHub Action service. Uh, in our example, we're receiving the issue title. We're receiving the, uh, the GitHub token secret, which, is, which we are using to invoke the GitHub API. And we're also receiving the uh, issue URL which is the URL API to, to invoke and to add this label. On the first side, this workflow looks quite innocent and, uh, and looks uh, quite okay, but uh, actually it's not, and it's vulnerable to code injection. Uh, the problem is that we are not sanitizing and not verifying this issue title, which is user controlled. Any user could insert uh, 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 
the, could inject code into that title. And actually, you can manage to, uh, to run code on our workflow. For example, if we create such title, it, it has a this quotation marks that ends the if in that workflow. And actually, then we're just inserting our code. For example, apt install figlet and figlet psycode, which will result in printing this pretty psycho text. We can say that uh, we managed to uh, execute code on the build server of that action using, uh, using a, a user input for that, uh, for that title. Pretty cool. But is it a bug or a feature? Actually, GitHub acknowledged it, and it's even in the, the documentation. The GitHub says that when you create workflows, you should always consider whether your code must, might execute untrusted input from the attackers. Uh, but the real question is whether the maintainers of the project and the owner, project owners are aware of these issues. So we went into, into small journey. Um, there is a, a really cool tool that's called the GitHub Code Search. Uh, it's still in the preview phase. I uh, suggest you all to check it out. It works, works really great. And we wanted to, to, to see how many uh, public workflows could be uh, susceptible to this vulnerable uh, injection. So we inserted several keywords. For example, it could be the issue title, the issue body, or uh, several other uh, user-controlled input. We inserted the, the run command. Um, and we were uh, surprised to see there are many, many uh, workflows that are vulnerable to this, uh, to this uh, injection. So we could really safely say, say that it's quite a widespread issue. Uh, so out of all this, we found thousands of repositories that are, uh, was, were vulnerable to this uh, uh, code injection. Out of, out of these uh, dozen repositories, the most popular one uh, were Liquibase, which is a really popular uh, database uh, schema changing tool. We found it in Dynamo, which is a project that's sponsored by Autodesk. It's a visual programming tool. Uh, Fauna, which is a transactional database. Uh, Wire, which is an open source communication platform. Astro, which is a static site builder, and many, many more. Uh, Liquibase on its own claims that it has been downloaded over, over 75 million times. So we can, could safely say that uh, these vulnerabilities could impact maybe millions of uh, potential victims. So what could be the consequences of uh, this build compromise? First, uh, soon we'll see how it's possible, but we could expose uh, secrets. Previously, we talked what is secrets and how it works. We could expose this. The secrets could contain uh, sensitive assets like uh, AWS tokens, GCP, Azure tokens, uh, Docker Hub, JFrog, and, and so on. We could use the exposed uh, GitHub tokens to commit back to the repository and maybe to introduce some uh, a botnet and which will be deployed to end user or organization environment, which could, be, could result in a supply chain attack. And a much smaller risk would be uh, an ability to run uh, maybe botnets or uh, crypto miners on uh, the runner infrastructure. Yeah. So let's see how, from technical perspective, how can we actually expose these secrets? How an attacker could do that? Um, we'll take an example which will follow us uh, through the slides. Uh, so this example uh, will be the will build a workflow that will be triggered whenever a new issue is created, just like previously. It will define an environment variable which is called GitHub token, which received the GitHub token value. We'll, see, we'll soon see why we define that, and it will contain three steps. Uh, the first one will be running a checkout uh, command. Uh, this uh, syntax is uh, the action checkout, uh, whoever not uh, familiar with GitHub Actions. It's with are calling an external action that's called checkout, which is basically doing a git clone to the code. Um, the second command will just will be printing the issue title and description. And the third command, similar to previously, will uh, invoke a GitHub API together with an additional secret that is the bot token, an additional secret which we, which will define, and we will update this issue with uh, with some label. Uh, 
as previously, as we seen previously, uh, this workflow is vulnerable. You, we, are, we are not sanitizing the title and the body of the issue, and a potential attacker could uh, insert malicious code there. So to, uh, uh, to uh, explore the vulnerabilities, to understand uh, uh, how, can we, uh, how, can, how can we exploit it, we created a simple lab, lab environment. Instead of uh, tweaking the uh, workflows and seeing the results, we wanted, let's create a reversal from the, uh, from the built environment right into our, uh, uh, right into our lab computer. For that, we use the popular tool, the uh, NGROC. Uh, we just uh, run it with a random port, for example, 10,000. We received from uh, NGROC uh, the, the endpoint which we'll use in our exploit. Then we just run Netcat to listen on the port 10,000. And then we, we will send the malicious payload to the, uh, to the issue to create the reversal. So let's sum it up. We, uh, finally, if we create this issue in GitHub in to, to that specific vulnerable workflow, it will result in a creating a reverse shell that we will con we control from our lab computer and see the entire uh, infrastructure of GitHub Actions. So let's get back to the example. The first method, which is a very simple method to, uh, to exfiltrate secrets, will be by listing the, all the environment variables. In this example, we define the GitHub token as one of the environment variables, and simply by listing all of them, we could uh, get this uh, variable and use it for our malicious purposes. The second scenario will be to use the, the checkout command, the action checkout command. As, as I said previously, this action, uh, this checkout command is doing git clone, but it also, behind the scenes, it sends the GitHub token as a default parameter to the external action. This uh, GitHub token, this default parameter, is used as an authorization token for the git clone. So uh, in addition, if when we are using some token for git clone, we're also creating uh, that git slash config file in that uh, directory where we clone the code. And uh, this uh, file also contains the authorization parameters. So as an attacker, if, we, uh, if a checkout command was used, we could take this file, grab the authorization line, pipe it through a base64 decoding, and we get the, the GitHub token just as previously. The third method that we found is a bit more complex. Uh, during our reconnaissance of the uh, runner infrastructure, we found that uh, for each uh, run command, we have two such commands. For each run command, previously, before it's been executed, it also is saved as a shell file in the runner infrastructure in that specific runner temp directory. So for example, uh, for this specific workflow, we have a, a single shell file that contains the exact content of this run command, but instead of the uh, placeholders of the issue title and issue body, it will contain the real value that GitHub Action Service has uh, inserted there. So as an attacker, we could uh, get this uh, script, and if there contains some, uh, some secrets or some sensitive data, we could, uh, we could get it to, to our malicious per, uh, usages. For example, in uh, the second round command, we have this bot token that we could use, use it and uh, exfiltrate it. Unfortunately, we have only code execution capabilities on this point, on the first run command. We didn't receive yet the second shell file. So a simple solution as an attacker could be to put some maybe agent or persistent script on that machine and wait for the second command to, to come and be written to, to that uh, directory. And whenever it's there, just exfiltrate it as me immediately. So we could do the following. We could create some script that records uh, uh, all the modified shell files in that directory. And whenever uh, and we could pack the script as a Docker container to ease the deployment, just run it in some detached mode. And whenever uh, a new file will be written there, a new shell file, it will be exfiltrated immediately. And we'll soon see that as a demo. So this was the, uh, the simple methods attacker could apply. A more advanced method are possible as well, which out of the scope of this talk, it could be uh, inspecting the memory layout of the, of the runner uh, processes. It could be 
uh, exfiltrating them, uh, uh, their environment variables. It could be uh, recording uh, network traffic and extracting sensitive information from it, and more. So let's see uh, several demos. The first one will show how we are able to exfiltrate the secrets. We'll do that in two phases. Uh, the first phase will send uh, the simple GitHub token from the environment variable. And for the second phase, uh, we'll put that uh, persistent script on the machine. We'll wait for the, for the second, uh, command, uh, for second, second run command, and we'll just get the entire script uh, to our uh, lab environment. So let's see that in action. First, we're set up in our server. We have the, here we have our uh, demo repository. Just a second. And we're sending the uh, malicious issue. Let's hope it works. This issue will contain uh, several uh, commands. The first one will exfiltrate the uh, GitHub token through the, uh, from the environment variable. And then we'll set up some uh, Docker container. You could see we got the first one, which is the GitHub token to our server, exfiltrated. And then we got the second one, uh, the second uh, secret. You could notice that we have the, con the complete shell file, the complete run command that we had in the workflow. But instead of the bot token, we had the, the revealed secret, which an attacker could use uh, for his uh, malicious purposes. This was the first demo. For the second demo, we show how we were able to commit a, a malicious code to the repository using these uh, secrets. For that, we created a simple, simple bash script, uh, nothing fancy there. It just it gets a file to commit and the, the path where to commit that file. It does some git configuration. Uh, uh, it finally, just git commit, git push, really plain simple. And uh, on the runner side, we'll, we are uh, we're fetching this script, giving it parameters, and we're just giving the pro proper permission and run it. Let's see that. We're running the malicious issue. You could see the repository has a single uh, readme file and workflow. In, and in this, in this issue, as I previously said, uh, is firstly fetching the, the malicious uh, the script, uh, giving it the proper permission, and just running it, giving it the parameter of the file that you want to commit and the, the path of the file. Let's see the repository now. We have a new additional file in the repository. It's called malicious file that was committed 19 seconds ago. Uh, in addition, also, we are controlling the commit message. So this is our control data, the, the, the commit message and the maintainer name. Uh, we can put, can put it or whatever you want if a game go, commit signing isn't enforced. So this was the second demo. The third demo is a bit more uh, complex. Um, up until this point, we show how we are able to exfiltrate secrets that we found in a specific vulnerable workflow, in that specific vulnerable workflow. But there are additional secrets that could be defined in either on the repository or on the organization that aren't used in that specific workflow. So we showed how we are able to commit to the repository. So why not we use this commit ability, the right ability, to commit an additional workflow to the repository, which will exfiltrate all possible secrets of that is that repository is, a, is can can access to so that's what we'll do exactly we created we will commit a new uh, workflow that will take all the secrets that uh, this workflow is, uh, has access to file, write it to the file and just take this file and send it to our server in addition we'll do some cool trick that this workflow will also delete itself so we won't leave any traces uh, but we have uh, one problem, how we will invoke this workflow, how we make it to run. We could maybe invoke the GitHub API, but uh, GitHub denied the ability to invoke workflows within other workflows. 
probably to deny some circular uh, invocation of workflows. But uh, we thought about the other trick. This trick is called workflow run. We created a workflow and told him to run after an, another workflow is finished. So we told him to run after the, another workflow that's called vuln will finish, which is the vulnerable workflow which we injected in the first place. So the flow would be uh, we injecting code to the original workflow. That code will create a new workflow. And when the original workflow will be finished, GitHub Action Service will trigger this automatically according to this workflow run uh, trigger. Uh, and on the uh, runner side, on the runner command, we, just, uh, we will invoke a simple uh, curl uh, to GitHub API together with the uh, with the GitHub token as, an, as a, a token to, a, a, to commit this uh, workflow. Uh, we will add a message and a committer, and the content will be base64 encoding of this entire workflow. So we will take all these parameters, invoke, invoke API to the contents API with the path where we want to commit uh, this file. So let's see that. So we are committing this, uh, we're we are adding this uh, malicious issue. We couldn't add this to the title because it was too long, so we uh, added it to the body. But it does exactly what we've seen in the, in the slides, is uh, it's calling a, a curl command to GitHub API together with all the parameters, uh, together with the, with the commit message, the committer, the, the content, uh, the base64 content, and in few seconds, uh, I hope we'll see something. Yeah, we can see we got an additional message. Uh, we have the bot token, which is the bot token which we've seen previously. We got it uh, from the repository secrets. We got the GitHub token for that specific workflow. And in addition, and in addition we got two additional secrets. We got Secret one and secret two, which could be maybe a secret that defined in the repository or organization that weren't in that specific workflow. And, the, and it also could be really sensitive, uh, sensitive assets of that specific uh, uh, repository. So that's it for the demos. Uh, let's see how can we uh, mitigate these issues. The first mitigation will be to avoid, avoid run steps. For example, instead of uh, issuing a, a curl to GitHub API to update a label of, for example, that issue, we can use an external action. For example, the labeler, labeler uh, external action, uh, which does exactly the same. It receives uh, the parameter for uh, what label you want to add. It you also send a GitHub token to the, to, the, to the external action. It does exactly the same, and it's not... Uh, it's not susceptible to a code ejection. This mitigation is not always possible. There's uh, cases where you can't run from, doing, from using a bash script, but uh, whenever you can, it's uh, very recommended. The second mitigation will be sanitizing your input. This is maybe the most effective way to, uh, to stop this specific attack. This means that instead of uh, using, uh, I can use our example, like issue title, issue body inside the run command, uh, the preferred method will be to define them outside as intermediate environment variable, for example, as title and description environment variable, and then use this environment variable inside the, inside the run command. Even if this, uh, the title and description will contain a code, it won't be run, it will be treated as text because it's sanitized as an environment variable. Uh, another effective method for post-exploitation uh, will be to limit token permissions. Uh, inside the workflow, inside the YAML file, we can add this permission tag, which will, which will that are defining the permission that the GitHub token will have during that uh, build. So in our example, we use the GitHub token either to clone the code and we use to update the issues, so this is the only set of permission we need for that uh, token. 
So we, the preferred method would be to add these permissions in each workflow to, to limit the, the GitHub token permissions. So even if uh, an attacker has managed to, to get a code execution on your build server, you won't be able to do whatever you want because its permission will be limited. Uh, another mitigation would be to limit, limit secret exposure, which is more uh, relevant to the third demo that I showed, that there are organization secrets. Uh, each organization secret, you can define to what level of exposure you want that secret to be, either to all the repositories in the organization, maybe only private ones or selected ones. And the last uh, mitigation would be to use environments and branch protection. This is a quite new mitigation that uh, available only at GitHub Enterprise. Uh, you, can, you can define um, environments for your GitHub Action workflows, for example, production, testing, staging, and each such environment will contain its uh, own private secret. Uh, but the, uh, but you, you can use these environments also to apply some several security mitigations, like branch protections and other various uh, mitigations. So it's, it's quite an effective method. So that's it. So what will be uh, the takeaways from uh, this, uh, this talk? First of all, even when GitHub does uh, most of the security uh, for you, for, for the GitHub Actions, I mean, it uh, gives you a VM isolated uh, machines and ephemeral environments and many other security features, your builds pipeline still could be compromised. So this may be the most important takeaway from this, call, this talk. Uh, as we've seen in the best practices paper, uh, GitHub Actions uh, platform delegates to the developer the responsibility from some of the security features in the workflows. Uh, I'm a developer myself, and I, I, know, I know developers do make mistakes, so it should be handled uh, carefully. The third one is the consequences of a build compromise could be quite disastrous. It could, they could result in exposing sensitive secrets. It could be a... Uh, resulting in a critical supply chain inc incidents and could be quite uh, dangerous. And the last one is that specific GitHub gives you the, all the right set of tools to secure your workflows. And it's really, it, securing a pipeline isn't a matter of faith. And you, should, you have the right tools to protect and we encourage you to do that. And uh, that's it. Thank you. You're uh, welcome to check the uh, full blog post in the uh, PsyCode blog, uh, full technical details. Uh, you're welcome to reach out to me at Twitter whenever you want. And uh, if we have time, I can take a few questions. Yeah. Yeah, I've been doing that, and they mostly they are written in Node, the, the external action, and they're quite more secure than using that. So yeah, I was looking at that, and it was really quite harder to find the external action that's vulnerable than this uh, bash script. Yeah. Maybe louder. Yeah, anonymous maintainer. Yeah, you could get. Uh, you asked. You asked if if I found any ways for anonymous maintainer to execute code on a, a non on a non maintainer. Yeah. yeah. But what do you mean outside the injections? Other than, yeah. uh, other, than other method than injections to uh, for non maintainer to execute. Not that I know of. I was researching this specific attack, so maybe there are more that we're not aware of, so I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, automated scanners could help to remediate it. I mean, they could, like SEMGRAP, for example, it's a great tool that could do that. Uh, it could find like a, a, this specific vulnerable action and could uh, SEMGRAP. Ah. Uh. 
Yeah, I didn't look specifically at scorecard, but there are other tools that do that. So uh, probably scorecard do that as well. Yeah. Sorry. Ah, uh, yeah, my specific demo, it wasn't, but it's possible to do that also with the uh, git force push. And uh, yeah, unless uh, the force push was disabled by branch protection, which can be quite complex, but if it's not, it's possible also to alter the git history and to, to it will, will disappear. Well, thank you. Oh, I'll talk, shut it down. <laughs> Just a second.